Hi everyone, are you curious to learn about digital signal processing? Then you have come to the right place. Let me explain the fundamental concepts of signal, types of signals and signal processing all in one go. Are you ready to dive into the fascinating world of signals? Let's get started and learn all about them. Can you tell me how you would define signals? So in a simple way, anything that carries or conveys some information is called as a signal or when we talk about a signal we are actually referring to any voltage current or electromagnetic wave that changes over time and carries some sort of information fine so we usually encounter signals in our day-to-day -day life for example music speech, photos, heartbeat, etc. These all are what? A kind of signals because it carries or conveys some information. Fine. Did you know that a signal can actually depend on one or even multiple independent variables? So a signal may be a function of time, pressure, distance, position and so on. So basically there are two types of signals. One is what analog signal, another one is digital signal. Clear? So a signal is said to be analog signal if it is defined continuously for any value of an independent variable. So most of the signals are analog in nature. So this is what our definition for an analog signal. Now let's see about the digital signal. Fine. Okay. So on the other hand, a discrete signal is one that is defined for a specific interval of an independent variable. So when a discrete time signal is quantized and coded then it becomes a digital signal. So you can see like a signal is said to be a discrete signal if it is defined for discrete intervals of a of an independent variable and the quantized and coded version of a discrete time signal are called what digital signals. Is it clear? Now if the independent variable of an analog signal is time, it is known as continuous time signal and denoted by x of t. Similarly, if the independent variable of a discrete signal is time, it is known as discrete time signal and denoted by x of n. Now let's understand this by the help of graphs. Fine. So this is what xt versus t this is what a time and this is what x of t because we usually denotes continuous time signal by x of t so this is a graph okay it is a time axis now if you see this signal so it is what continuous right continuous in nature it means a continuous time signal has values for all the points in the time okay in some interval so this is what continuous time signal if you see you can get the value at 0 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 also 1.1 1.2 1 1.3 also so this signal is what continuous fine so a continuous time signal has values for all points in the time in some interval fine now let's see the discrete time signal so basically a discrete time signal is denoted by x of n and this is the time axis which is denoted by n correct so now a discrete time signal has values for only discrete points in time right for example it will give a value at n is equal to 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 like this okay don't accept don't expect the value at n is equal to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 like this values fine 
so a discrete time signal is what has values for only discrete points in time hope this thing is clear to you what is the difference between ct signal and dt signal so right now we are covering the basics of signals but let's move on to move on to talking about systems so what exactly is a system well a system is what a system is made up of different parts that works together to process signals now let us examine the block diagram representation of a system fine so a system basically comprises an input signal and an output signal so basically this output signal is what a modified rendition of the input signal it means output signal is what processed version of a input signal is it clear in essence a system receives input signal undergoes through what processing undergoes through processing fine and subsequently generates output signal in response to the input so it's all about taking that input and transforming it into something new right so that's all you need to know about the basics of systems now let's dive into signal processing fine so signal processing is what signal processing is all about analyzing modifying and synthesizing signals it's a method that allows us to extract valuable information from signals by performing algorithmic operations on them so basically there are two main types of signal processing one is what analog signal processing another one is what digital signal processing clear so what happen in analog signal processing so in analog signal processing we use analog signal processor to handle the task this processor takes analog input signal as input okay process them and provide analog output signal that are essentially transformed version of the input clear so here analog signal processor is the responsible for analog signal processing hope this is clear to you now let's move on to digital signal processing okay fine so this type of processing involves using digital systems like personal computers and devices designed with digital integrated circuits microprocessors and microcontrollers so dsp gained popularity in the 1960s okay in a digital signal processing system we first convert analog signals to digital signals then the digital system process this signals before converting them back to analog form i hope this much is clear to you so what happen in the real world signals are analog and it's only when we want to process them using digital systems then we convert them to digital form to do this conversion we use an analog to digital converter this converter okay so what is the purpose of this analog to digital converter to convert the analog signal to digital signal fine now the process involves sampling and quantization of analog signals followed by converting the quantized sample into suitable binary codes fine so once the signals are in digital form they can be fed to digital systems for processing after the processing is complete the system generates an output signal okay in the form of binary code and to convert this output back to analog form we use digital to analog converter fine so what is the purpose of 
A to D converter. So input is what here? Input is basically input is what? Analog. analog signal. Now this A to D converter will convert this to what input means basically it convert to a digital signal, a digital signal and this digital signal is acting as an input for this digital system, digital signal processor okay and this digital signal processor is responsible for what digital signal processing, digital signal processing processing fine now what happened after processing is complete this system generates an output signal in the form of binary code it means you will get an output digital signal digital signal fine now to convert this output back to analog form we use a digital to analog converter now you will get the output you will get an output which is what analog signal again analog signal fine so in a nutshell digital signal processing allows us to work with the real world analog signals using digital systems fine so it's a fascinating field that has revolutionized various industries and continues to evolve with advancement in technologies so this is what the digital signal processing hey if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you have any concern please ask in the comment section thank you